Hey, what is up? I am Drew Vosberg. I'm a vlogger who lives and works in the Chicagoland area. I use only my phone to shoot my videos, and I'm going to show you what is in my backpack on my daily commute into the city. Now you might be wondering why I choose to shoot with my phone. In fact, I actually own a Rebel T7i DSLR camera, so I could use that for vlogging. The reason why I choose to use my phone is that I always have my phone on me and I don't have to mess with SD cards. I don't have to charge an extra thing. I know I can always keep my phone charged and with me, and so with that said, let's take a look at the gear that I use. The backpack I use every day is the Derby Tier by United by Blue. The thing I love most about this backpack is its slim profile. When I'm commuting in the city or I'm on public transit, it's really easy to turn around because the backpack is so narrow. Now the backpack I came from before this one was the Little America backpack by Herschel. That's a great bag, but I found that it sticks out more from my back and so I was more likely to hit people if I was turning around in a confined space. Since I live in a city, that happens fairly often, so I really appreciate how slim this bag really is. On the sides, there are these leather straps that I use to hold my umbrella, which actually comes in its own zip-up hard case, which is really nice. The problem is the hard case is just too small to fit within the tightest strap setting, so I had to create this small wire mesh out of a hanger to keep the bottom of the umbrella locked in place. Now on the right strap of my backpack, I have this really neat zip up case, which houses both of my attachment lenses for my phone. The lenses attach using this mounting bracket on the back. It's a piece of aluminum that's stuck onto the phone with an included piece of 3M adhesive. These lenses are made by Moment. They're the first generation of the Moment lenses. And what they do is they change the field of view of what you're shooting. Let me show you what I mean by that. I have two different lenses. One is a zoom lens, so that zooms in automatically. The other one is a wide lens, and that does the opposite. It zooms out, so you see more than you could with your phone's camera by default. Let's take a look at what I mean. Here's a shot down my street. This is a shot with the zoom lens attached on my phone. So if I take that lens off, here's what it looks like with no lens attachments. You can see that zoom lens was really cropping down to give me a higher resolution image of this frame. Now if I attach the wide lens, we get even more of the street in view. This wider lens is what I use for a lot of my vlogging shots because it means that I can keep my camera closer to my face and not have to hold it way out with a selfie stick and still get a lot in view. For demonstration purposes, here's another shot with the zoom lens, with no lens attachments, and here it is with the wide lens again. So you can see you get a lot more of that image. Now let's bust into this backpack. The interesting thing about this bag is it doesn't have a whole lot of compartments. In fact, it only has one main compartment area. There is a laptop and tablet sleeve where I keep my older 2015 MacBook Pro and my 10.5 inch iPad Pro. The iPad I actually use as a portable monitor for my phone sometimes using an app called Filmic Remote. The partner app to that is called Filmic Pro and I'm gonna get more into that later in this video. Now, aside from the laptop and tablet sleeve, there's only this one large zip down compartment. So you can get into it very easily, but there's not a whole lot of built-in organization. That's why I picked up this Grid It by Cocoon. This is the seven by 11 inch version. I think that's the biggest that they offer right now. And what's nice about this is it lets me store all of the things that I need to charge my phone, my battery pack, anyone else's Android phone. And what's really clutch about this is the way that I slide this into my backpack, the USB ports on my battery pack are facing up so that I can charge devices as I'm walking around. Really handy. Now there is room here for a bigger battery pack and if I had a newer MacBook Pro, I could get one of those really beefy ones and charge my laptop while I'm walking around, which is really awesome. I just didn't want to make the trade off for only the USB-C ports right now. That being said, I do want to upgrade battery packs soon, but it's not mission critical right now. Also in my grid is my external SSD, which I use to edit my videos on. It's really nice to have all that footage off of my computer to give my operating system some room to breathe. In the bottom of the main compartment, I keep my DJI Spark drone. I went for the Fly More package, which I highly recommend. It comes with this carrying case, but more importantly, it comes with the remote. Now I've 3D printed some stick guards to protect the joysticks while it's in the bag. 
And I have some other really cool accessories that I would recommend as well. Let's start with this parabolic signal booster. What this does is it reflects the radio waves coming off the antennas on the controller. Now what this means is you're not gonna be able to hold this controller at any angle and still control the drone. You have to point it at the drone more directly, but you're gonna get a much stronger signal. This is crucial if you're flying in a place with a lot of radio frequency interference, like a big city. Usually your phone connects to this controller over Wi-Fi, which again, is gonna get interfered with. So I use this small cable, which has a micro USB 90 degree jack on one side and a lightning cable on the other side. It connects to my phone. My phone acts as a screen for the drone. On the drone itself, I have a gimbal cover because I don't want that camera getting banged around while I'm in transit. The wings on the propellers are able to fold up and make it more compact and unfold automatically when you turn the drone on. And another reason to recommend that Fly More package, I get an extra battery that fits right in this case. Everything zips right back up and that slides down at the bottom of my bag. I've owned this drone for about six months and it has been awesome. Here are some of the shots I've been able to get to give you an idea of the capabilities of what the Spark can do. Also in that main compartment, I keep my day-to-day -day tripod. This model is updated since the last time I made a video about my gear. This is the Joby Gorillapod Hybrid. And the reason why I picked this model is because it's middle of the road between quality and price. Now, in my experience, you're going to have to be replacing your flexible tripod no matter how much money you spend on it. So what I'm trying to do is walk the line between features and costs so that I have everything I need when I'm shooting, but I'm not spending so much money when I'm getting a new tripod every six months or so. The Gorillapod hybrid strikes that balance for me. It still has that ball head mount and it has a bubble level. So if I'm setting up a camera shot, I can tell if my camera is level. The tripod adapter that I'm putting my phone in is a very specific choice. I use the Apple battery case, which is a really chunky case on my phone. And not every phone tripod adapter can fit that thick of a case. My old tripod adapter was plastic and it wasn't quite thick enough. And so if you barely touch it, the phone will just pop right out. And in fact, that happened to me, my phone fell and I cracked the lens. Now this metal phone tripod adapter by Ulanzi is the complete opposite of those cheaper plastic adapters. It's got a really solid aluminum build. It screws down to tighten and clamp, hold on tightly to your phone with some nice rubber pads that keep things safe and undamaged. Now, usually I'll use my tripod either as a tripod for stable shots or in this kind of selfie stick mode. With these flexible tripods, it's important to remember there's kind of a hidden cost between moving these around. These tripod joints age really quickly, so I would recommend against playing with it or moving it too much if you can help it. That'll make sure your tripod lasts as long as possible so you're not having to rebuy one every three months or whatever it is. Moving on, I feel like I have a pretty complete audio setup at this point. I've got this Shure MV88 condenser microphone. Now this is a raw mid-side condenser microphone, which is a fancy way of saying it's actually directional, so I can control the angle that it is able to focus the audio in. That is huge if you're out on the street and there's a ton of street noise around you. It will mainly pick up in whatever direction the microphone is facing, and since this is able to mount on your phone and you can adjust the angle, you can point it at whatever you're recording. And if you're holding the camera, you can flip it around because lightning ports are reversible and it will point at yourself. Now in the box, you're gonna get this nice hard case which you can use when you're traveling and also this spherical pop filter. That will filter out some wind noise, but I would really recommend getting this wind jammer by Rycoat. These are often called dead cats and they do an excellent job of knocking down wind noise if you're at a beach somewhere, if it's a really windy day, or if you're on a bike or skateboard. This will almost completely eliminate your wind noise problems, which is huge. The default microphones on the iPhone are bad. I didn't realize this at first, but when you add a lens attachment to your phone, the default iPhone microphone is right underneath there and it creates disgusting sounding wind distortion. The MV88 with the wind jammer completely takes care of that. Now, that doesn't mean that there aren't any downsides to this mic. In fact, there are quite a few issues that I've run into. You have to put your phone in airplane mode if you're going to be using this microphone. 
if you have T-Mobile or AT&T in the United States or any GSM cell carrier, which is most of the world's cell carriers, you're going to be able to hear the cell signal being transmitted to and from your phone unless you put your phone in airplane mode. That's a pretty big hassle. It's really high maintenance to use this microphone because of that problem. Now, the other thing I can't go without mentioning is early on when I had this, there were times when I would record video and there would be no audio whatsoever. That's not been happening to me in the last five or six months, but the fact that that's ever happened at all is a pretty significant issue. You need your gear to work. So that makes me a little more hesitant to recommend this microphone. I think that might've been a software issue and I haven't run into it lately. I feel like I need to bring it up for full disclosure. That being said, this microphone has been great for me and it might be a good pickup for you depending on what your budget is. Now the other microphone that I've been using is the Smart Lav Plus by Rode. Now the pros of using a lav mic is focused audio. You can clip this mic only a few inches from your face and get excellent, pristine, clean audio, which is awesome. It also doesn't suffer from the cell interference problems that the MV88 does, which means you can just plug it in and go. And the other excellent feature is it can work with basically anything. It plugs in with a three and a half millimeter headphone jack. Now I know that my phone doesn't have a three and a half millimeter jack, but with this stupid little white dongle, I can plug it into my phone. And my iPad doesn't even need a dongle. It has a headphone jack built in. You can even record using something like an iPod Nano, although personally I've had really negative experiences with that where the default voice memos app gives me a ton of peaking and the audio is almost unusable. There are two major cons that I can think of with this microphone. One, it only has a four foot cable, which means you have to be pretty close to whatever you're recording into. And two is the price. This thing is more than double the lower end models on Amazon. But when I'm thinking about audio, I'm really looking for quality to begin with. I can get audio for free out of my phone. So I've been willing to invest in that audio equipment to really take my audio to the next level. And finally, let's talk about the phone that I use. I use a 128 gig iPhone 7. I'm not using an iPhone 8, an iPhone 10. This is a pretty affordable phone at this point, and I think the image quality is pretty good for the price. Right now, I would say this is probably the best bang for buck iPhone. Now for my case, I use the Apple Smart Battery Case. I wish I didn't use this case. I really want to use Moment's Battery Case and the new version of Moment Lenses. But Apple has actually locked me out of that option, and so I'm gonna complain about that here. <laughs> Apple doesn't allow third-party battery cases to pass audio through the lightning jack. This means that my Shure MV88 mic can't record audio through the Moment battery case, which is infuriating. This is a software setting from Apple. I have to use a battery case with my phone because when I'm shooting in 4K, it drains my battery so quickly. So I'm forced to use Apple's smart battery case, which I don't really like, and here's why. The case gets dinged up and ripped super easily, and I would highly recommend just buying one used on eBay. They're half the cost and no one's really counterfeiting them. So you should be able to pick one up. It will charge your phone about one time. What I did in the past was I had two smart battery cases and I would always keep one charged in my backpack, the other one on the phone. And when the battery case died, I would switch out the cases so I could continuously have at least 100% battery on my phone plus whatever is in the battery case. Now I'm down to one battery case, one of them got stolen, but I've found that one charge has been plenty for me. Now my overall setup with the battery case, lens, mic, and tripod is pretty heavy, but that's actually a good thing. A heavier camera is less shaky, so I've found that I don't need a gimbal yet. I want to get one eventually. I'm considering the new DJI Osmo Mobile 2, but for now, I just haven't needed it because adding all these attachments to my phone makes it heavy enough that the footage is fairly smooth. And finally, one of the most essential tools that I've been using to shoot my videos is Filmic Pro. Now, this is an app for iPhone and iPad, and I actually bought the entire Filmic Pro suite, which is about $30, which is a really expensive price for just an app. But here's what you can get with that. I can shoot in different frame rates, different color profiles, and different bit rates, which all give you more information per frame of video. This gives me better options for color, resolution, and overall just a better experience. Like I mentioned earlier, I also got the iPad app, which lets me control my phone with the iPad and set all the settings from there. 
So that's my setup right now. I bring all of that to work with me every single day. It's been really helpful, even if I'm not using it every day, it's nice to know that I always have the option to get out the drone, to get the shot that I want, and it really has been the camera that I have with me. If I brought my DSLR with me, that would pretty much fill up my entire backpack. So it's been super nice to have all of these little add-ons that add up to be one nice camera. All right, that's it for me. Let me know what you think about this video in the comments below. All of these products are linked in the description. These are Amazon affiliate links. If you like this video, please consider subscribing and I hope to see you soon.